My name is Dr. Memuna Yusuf Kadri, popularly known as Dr. Me. And the title of my equity talk is Beyond Clinic Wars, the How Body Mobile Counseling Revolution for Mental Health Equity. At 14 years of age, in grade nine, I came home excitedly to meet my best friend, my elder brother. I call him my Voltron, the defendant of the universe. I dropped my bags, ran around the whole house, searched every room, checked every corner. 15 minutes of me running around, I heard my grandma call me to the living room. She was an adorable grandma. She always praised me. Ajaumura, almost yogu yogu, almost no sote, Miss Nigeria, and all the praises that comes to mind. By the time I sat in the living room, other family members, has, they've also gathered. And then she dropped the bombshell. Mohammed had died just a month before I came home after experiencing just barely two hours of having a headache. Mohammed the Qureshi was just 16 years old. Two days after receiving this devastating news, I started experiencing headaches. Like really, feverish feeling, not eating, vomiting, the whole house went on a panic mode. I was rushed to the hospital and I was ad admitted. Four days into admission, the doctor noticed that I wasn't having so much significant improvement as expected. So he called in my parents and asked them one significant question. Has this girl received any news, experienced any trauma in recent times? Then he was told that I just lost my elder brother, and that is the reason why, you know, I might be feeling the way I'm feeling. He told them to take me home, but I was physically okay, but I needed a lot of, you know, emotions, a lot of counseling, a lot of support to help me heal. I'm from a family of four wives, 27 children, over 20 uncles and aunties living under the same roof. Their support was refreshing. But what I didn't get was the emotional counseling which a 14-year-old who just lost her best friend should have. My family didn't see reasons for counseling because to them, I had all that I needed as a child and that was enough. I live with this emotional pain till I got into residency to become a psychiatrist in 2005. 20 years plus after receiving this news, in a seminar with 500 students from 20 various high schools in rural and remote communities in southwestern part of Nigeria, to be precise, Lagos, after a two hours health talk on your mental health and you for adolescents, a couple of the children ages 14 to 16 spoke about grief, anxiety, depression, and suicidal attempts. Bio, a 15-year-old, said he had attempted suicide twice because no one thinks he had depression. Taiwo, on the other side, a 14-year-old, said she had just lost her twin sister and no one was speaking to her about her pain. Why Kemi, a 16-year-old, spoke on her constant panic attacks since she, her house was attacked by armed robbers for over two years. Listening to these experiences, my past trauma of losing my brother brought back painful memories. Nothing, absolutely, nothing has changed since then. And probably these teenagers in rural and hard to reach communities in Nigeria have to suffer even more because they don't have access and information to mental health solutions and most importantly, how to assess care. Unfortunately, this is not the story of Bayo, Taiwo, Kemi, but thousands of teenagers across Nigeria and across the globe. I'm sure some of you would either have 
gone through this or know someone who has experienced this. And if you have not, trust me, you are among the few lucky and privileged ones. And I so wish all of us could see this. In Nigeria, according to UNICEF in 2021, they stated that one in six person, young person, is currently depressed and many do not have any information or are misinformed on emotional changes that they undergo, causing proliferation of myths and unhealthy practices leading to mental illnesses. These teenagers have shared that not having information on when to visit mental health professionals during an emotional meltdown have become one of the primary reasons for long-time serious mental disorders. It, it may excite you to know that teenage years are critical formative years in the life of any human being. It is a fundamental phase and that is used for developing and maintaining social and emotional habits important for mental health and mental well-being. In recent time, of course, we've experienced COVID-19. We are all coming out from it. But the truth is that we have also found that there's a lot of traction, discussion when it comes to mental health, stakeholders meeting, policymakers holding discussion, not only in Nigeria, but also across the globe. And then the game changer came. Atlantic Fellows for Health Equity in 2023. This has been my only fellowship since my adult life that stated you should have a project at the beginning of an application. And this changed everything. The birth of her body mobile counseling booth was and is my project in this Amphi Fellowship. The reason because we already have a telemedicine platform, How Body, and having a project which I never imagined, which is something that they say, if you can think it, you can do it. And so leveraging on that telemedicine platform to having a mobile counseling booth, what people will easily call counseling on the wheel, was better. In my journey as an Atlantic Fellow for Global Health Equity, not knowing this past one year, mapping out of actors, the power of shared vision, distributed leadership. And as a psychiatrist with my team at Pinnacle Medical Services, we did not only talk, we walk the talk. We've had four community outreaches. We've been able to reach over 10,000 teenagers. We've trained 25 teachers on mental health first aid, so that whatever we are doing, that can be replicated in the communities and they can easily see these children and refer them to us. Now let me tell you what how body is. How body means how are you? That is the English word. But in Nigeria, that is a pidgin way of saying how are you? This statement is so powerful because when someone asks you, how are you, it fosters a sense of connection, reminding you that you are not alone in your experiences, which is crucial for mental well-being. This also helps to promote empathy, normalize open conversation, encourages help-seeking behavior, and reduces barrier to access to mental health. How body users is so important for us. This platform do not only have 19 assessments from anxiety to depression to addiction, but it also has trackers that you can track your mood, you can track your sleep. And of course, I did not leave my girls behind. You can track your period, <laughs> wellness, and of course, depression. And most importantly, what was so significant for us is that when you click of the, you know, tap on the platform, Anywhere, anywhere, anybody, wherever you go, you have access to speak to a specialist for culturally appropriate therapy. So if we want to ensure that teenagers are not discriminated against, then we need to change the narrative from silencing them to creating safe spaces where they can speak up, they can be listened to not judgmentally, and of course they wouldn't be criticized. For what the studies have shown us from what 
health organization half of all mental illnesses start before the age of 14 and to third before the age of 24 with this knowledge to enable teenagers to be able to speak up speak out and of course have access when and if they need mental health services we must create holistic mental health solutions products and services in our communities and of course in school dear fellows as the African proverb said, if you want to run fast, walk alone. And if you want to walk far, go with others. I'm here standing on behalf of every school teenager, Nigerian school teenager to be precise, who will benefit from these services and seek your help and support. We want to reach more communities. We want to reach more schools. We want to put this mobile counseling booth in malls, in places where people can just assess mental health care, where they wouldn't be judged, they wouldn't be criticized. And of course, we can bridge, bring about mental equity where these services can be affordable, accessible, and of course, available. And train more teachers as mental health force aiders in rural areas of Nigeria. Each one of you can become a mental health warrior. By spreading the words around this issue, and of course, our approaches, because collectively, we are stronger in bringing stigma-free mental health care and mental health equity to every Nigeria child. Now to you, my fellows, my dear esteem, Global Health Equity Fellows. Your vision shapes nations. Your compassion transforms lives. In your hands lies the power to heal the world. Your dedication, compassion, and unwavering resolve inspire many. You are architects of change, visionaries creating a future where every life is valued and every community thrives. Embracing challenges, inspiring change, and fueling the flames of equity. Your legacy is written in every life that you've touched. Together, dear fellows, let's create a future where health has no boundaries. Thank you, dear fellows, for your tireless efforts, your visionary spirit, and your enduring impact. My name remains Dr. Min and I honor you.